So I've been doing kids ministry since I was 12. My parents, we started a new sister church and it was a really small church plant. And so my parents felt led to be, um, take over the children's ministry and get that launched. And so we would spend every Saturday night coming into the building and we would practice puppet skits, get the area prepared. And then within a few years, I was going in and teaching the kindergarten and the preschoolers uh, their Sunday school class and then come in and teach the first or sixth graders during the regular service. And so it's been a long time. <laughs> I started kid doing kids church when I was 18, not on purpose. They asked for volunteers to help in the kids church, to help in the kids church. We showed up the next Sunday to help and they said, you're the only people we have, you're in charge. Um, did that for a couple years. And then I met a beautiful young woman who I fell in love with and her family did kids church at a different church. And you know, being the guy, we tend to follow the girl and I followed her, so we started helping them at their kids' church, and then we've been doing that ever since. Ever since. But why do we, we do this? Because A, it's we can't not. I've gotta be honest, I can't not do it. Uh, the, the hardest thing for me is <laughs> when some reason I don't get to be in the kids' church room, it was so weird to go in the big service. It might be a lot of hard work, but when that's what your calling is, yeah. It's way easy to work in your calling mm -hmm. versus doing something yeah. that's not where your giftings are. And that's definitely where we find our giftings line up. And well, so for us, it's easy. Yeah. What do kids mean to us? They're, oh man, they're, they're just that fresh ground. And so you get to plant and pour into them and they're not fully formed. And so they're still so, so they, malleable. Yeah. So we can really pour the love of Jesus into them mm -hmm. and they can just grow in that, they can assume those character traits that God wants out of them. And so they're way easier to work with because they don't have all of these preconceived yeah. set. Sunday morning, I'm excited because I know I'm gonna have a whole bunch of kids and you just feed back and forth off of them. You know, I feed to them and they feed right back to you. And the funny thing is you learn so much about God by teaching, especially to kids. You know, my gifting is kids, my calling is kids, my energy is kids, my life is kids. The, the pandemic is, it's tough for everyone. For kids, it's really tough. Kids don't they, don't, they don't know how to be immobile. They don't know how to not be on the go all the time. And think about kids ministry. I would say it's the highest impact ministry as far as contact. Kids, you know, you got kids, they're bunched up around, you play games. They're everywhere and they want to be everywhere. And they don't, they don't, they don't want to, you know, they, don't, they don't understand this, that they, they want to go. And so it was very difficult for us to be able to, to, to find a way around that, to say, how do we get kids excited? How do we get them to still actually want to hear about Jesus when they're sitting there? You know, I, I just know how rough it is on us. Think about it from the kid's point, it's hard. The calling hasn't changed. Right. So, but the beauty is, is we work with kids. When you work with kids, adaptation is that's what we do <laughs> kind of every sunday is a matter of adapting to the energy what's going on how is the lesson playing out how are the kids responding so praise god he says your calling hasn't changed so he has to give you new innovations and new ideas and so we just started running with that and then all of a sudden we'd get this random idea that hey what if we did this and then we'd run with it and we'd video it and we incorporated our kids all help us in kids ministry here and there but they had to step up to the plate they ended up having to do a little bit more they helped us with videos we made um, little skits and all five of us would be in that skit to, to tell people how they can kind of uh, still adapt their life to do what God's called them to do number one don't forget God called you to do it so many people are taking this as an excuse and saying, well, we can't do it. We'll just shut it all down. That's not the way God works. God works through the troubles and tri the tribulations. He doesn't say, well, we'll wait till the hurricane's over. He does it as you're going along. So number one is, is, is just remember, you still have that calling. And, you know, we are still called. The Great Commission is always in effect. That's number one. Okay, number two is, yeah, adaptation's a big deal. Um, and depending on what you're trying to do, like for us, we just know kids are visual. So we made sure we had something very visual every week to put at, at, at service. Um, so depending on where you are in your life, just keep going. I would just encourage people who are going through something, especially right now, really tough, just encourage you to, to just understand that not only is God still there, even when it feels that he's not, there's someone else still there that he's given you to. So, so remember that, cling to that. You know, you've got, that's what the church is all about. 